and welcome back to Ali and Coco's Science Show. We are back. We were back. And I will never do that again. I, I promise. So today I wanted to share a story of something that's just like very serendipitous. Like it was just a great moment in time that I wanted to share with you and that it involves treasure. I mean, not that kind of treasure. At least I don't think so. But uh, it does involve finding treasure, finding treasure to me. So um, this story involves everything that I love in one. Can you believe it? It, it has history, romance, science, it's got it all. So over a year ago, we moved into this apartment and I wanted like a really cool piratey kind of trunk to put my blankets in. So it's uh, about to rain, so she's a lap dog now. I love her. She's so sad. So, as fate would have it, there we were on our usual morning walk. It was garbage day. And we were walking in the nearby bougie neighborhood. And I came across the most beautiful, old, creepy trunk I've ever seen in my life out there on the side of the road with garbage inside, ready to be picked up by the garbage truck. I, I ran Colette back home. I got in my car. I just barely got there before the garbage truck threw it in the trunk of my car, trunk in a trunk, you're right. And um, y'all, this is the story of my beautiful steamer trunk. So you're probably like, what does this have to do with science, hmm? Y'all, there will be science included, don't worry. But it includes so many things that I love. History, for one. Also, eco-living. You know I love to live as green as possible and buy a lot of used furniture and save a lot of things dumpster diving. I've done that a lot. Um, and so this is like the perfect opportunity and it's a refurbishing project. I've always wanted to refurb some good old furniture. So y'all, my steamer trunk, oh my God, it's perfect. Also I had a bunch of old videos that I wanted to kind of compile in something really cute. So I thought, why not make a video? Okay, to start, what the heck is a steamer trunk? In the late 1800s, so like 1870 ish to the 1930s, people needed luggage to hold their belongings in when they got on steamships or steam trains. So basically, it's like a big fancy suitcase. It could be made out of wood, leather, metal combinations. Sometimes it could have such amazing designs, it could be really beautiful. People would put their like stickers of where they'd been all over it or like postage things. The one I came across was mostly metal or metal plating on top of wood. It even had wooden handles and teeny tiny metal wheels or mine had a wheel. And it, it's so cute, there's little bow designs. I just, it's adorable. So it was pretty gross and I didn't want to do a whole lot of work to it. I was like, I just want to kind of keep it, you know, old and creepy looking. <laughs> My brand. And so I was just like, yeah, I'll wash it. I'll fix the hinges and I'll pull out this like there's this icky fabric just stapled into the lid of the steamer trunk so I'm like I'll clean everything up vacuum the inside and pull out this fabric y'all oh my god I don't know why someone stapled fabric in the lid but I start pulling out the fabric and I notice there is very delicate paper coming off too so I remove all the staples with a screwdriver and underneath beautiful paper design with the most beautiful like portrait in there. Oh my gosh, probably haunted, definitely haunted. I love it so much. Now this is not like just my cheap little like give it a good scrub and screw in some hinges. Now it's like, ooh, I gotta find a way to like make sure this doesn't rip anymore. <laughs> yeah, good, great. Um, yes, and this is just a lesson. Don't just impulsively jump into things. Make sure you kind of do some good reading on the subject before jumping into a project. I'm very impulsive. And you know, it'll be a struggle for me to listen to my own advice right now, but uh, I'm just saying you should do it and I should also do it. So I removed all the staples and that took a while and then I don't have a vacuum or I didn't at the time. So I just cleaned it as best I could. Um, and got all the dust out. It was super gross. It was nasty, but I did it, so. And of course you have to clean the outside too. So I cleaned all the wood, I cleaned all the metal, gave it a good scrub. Give, just gotta make sure like the water runs clear at the end. It was really gross. But it was still a treasure. Sometimes you gotta 
get through the gross stuff to get to your treasure. Lesson number two. All right, so now the trunk is clean and dry, and now it's time to sand it down. I wanted to make sure everything was nice and smooth because I wanted to stain it, and also I didn't want splinters. Sandy, baby, when high school is done. <laughs> boo -da boo do 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 Another thing I'll never do again. I'm so sorry. Okay, so choosing the stain was kind of a struggle. I went on a lot of blogs that also repurposed or refurbished their steamer trunks, and they all swore by this expensive brand, this expensive brand, and I don't know who to believe in that instance, so I turned to history and science. I went with the classic. It's linseed oil. You may know linseed oil as flax oil from the flax plant. It's from Linum usitatissimum in the family Linaceae. This plant has been used for a long time from fibers and textiles to an edible source of good fats. In fact, in what is today's Georgia, the country, not the state, it was used ooh, over 30,000 years ago. It's popular all over the Fertile Crescent and China and India. Uh, ancient Egypt even has a hieroglyphic art depicting this plant. And it was used all over Europe as well. It was kind of a big deal. And even uh, King Charlemagne in the 8th century, he was like, I want everyone to eat flax oil. It's good for you makes you healthy. A lot of plants will have high amounts of fats in their seeds. It's a wonderful source of energy for a growing plant embryo. And it's also a great energy source for, for animals like us. And how fat molecule looks depends on the plant. Today I'll be focusing on three different types of fat molecules. So they might be like a saturated fat like coconut oil, which is just a long strand of lipids with just single bonds all over, single bonds all around. It could be monounsaturated fats like olive oil and peanut oil, which means it has one double bond. So instead of being like this, it'll have a double bond causing a kink, like a boomerang. I'm gonna come back like a boomerang. Don't come for me, Jojo Siwa. So this kink changes that viscosity and makes it like very slow flowing. Because of the double bond and this oil property, it's considered non-drying a non-drying oil. Or they can be polyunsaturated fats like linseed oil or hemp oil, which means they have multiple double bonds throughout the whole lipid molecule, which causes all these different kinks and different. It causes the oil to be very thin, which I totally saw when I was refurbishing my trunk. When I pour the linseed oil on, it would just run right off. And this trait and this characteristic of the double bonds is also really important for this type of oil and its use because it is great at polymerizing. Oxygen molecules will bond with certain parts of the uh, lipid molecule, usually near those double bonds, which allows for electrons to kind of get kicked out and uh, very and become very reactive. Over time, this means the oil will harden and dry out. It's a drying oil and it will create a nice protective film over whatever you put it on. Perfect for, you know, staining wood and keeping it nice and strong. Now you do have to be careful because the if there's linseed oil left on a rag and it dries out really quickly, it can become, again, very reactive. And if it gets hot enough, it can spontaneously combust. Oh, isn't science cool? What an adventure. Um, I made sure to really soak the rag and get as much out as I could before just getting, just putting it away somewhere. So no fires. I also had to fix a broken board on the bottom. That was easy. I stained it too with the linseed oil. No big deal. It doesn't match completely, but it's okay. Uh, and then I fixed the hinges. I screwed those on. Now the last thing I needed to fix was the paper. And I was really worried about this part. I asked my friend who's like, honestly, it can do everything perfectly. I asked her my options. She said I could either like kind of find a good way to, um, seal it on or I could steam it off and re-glue it. 
knowing my skills and that I don't have any, I decided not to do that. It sounded cool and would probably look better. But um, what I had was some Mod Podge. So I Mod Podge the paper to make sure it was nice and sealed and nothing else was gonna fall off. And um, it worked out really well. I think it looks it looks nice and it's not gonna fall off. And that's all I want in my life. So, and now guys, the reveal. And there you have it guys, my beautiful steam trunk reveal. Isn't it so cute with all its little designs? It's so beautiful and kind of piratey kind of spooky. I can't believe somebody threw this out, honestly. I think it's so gorgeous. I mean, maybe it's haunted, but I've already had it over a year and I haven't been possessed, so I think it's fine. It's, it's so smooth. This isn't gonna fall off. Oh my goodness. So guys, for the question of the week, I wanna know, have you ever repurposed an item? Have you ever done a refurbishment, anything like that? What is your favorite one? Besides a steamer trunk, my favorite one is actually this wingback chair. I, um, I've i always wanted a wingback chair and I love it. It's from the 70s. I bought it off someone for like $40 and I just, Colette sits in it more than I do because she's queen, but like I love, I love this chair. So guys, don't forget to comment down below. What is your favorite refurbishing project or anything like even related to this? And uh, don't forget to visit the links down below in the description. We have links to all our social media. And uh, uh, we will see you next time. Bye. Oh, what? Now you're barking at the mailman? Don't even.